another season of Snap-on Tools from the Ground Up. In previous seasons, we built a Factory 5 818C, a Type 65 Coupe, and this year, we're building a Mark IV Challenge race car. Previously, we built the vehicles at Factory 5's World Headquarters in Ware, Massachusetts. But this year, we've been given access to a personal garage of a very close friend of ours. What's happening? What's going on, man? It's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. I know it. I I've missed you, and I'm sure you've missed our company. Of course. Of course. <laughs> awesome facility here. Never been here. Uh, so much history from some cars you have had some history and passed with. Well, that's the cool thing about cars, you know, is like you have the cars you race, and there's history with that, but also the cars that I grew up around, or there's always a story behind cars a lot. Street legal NASCAR, yeah, Ford exactly. GT. Uh, how many doors in that vehicle over there? Yeah, there's a lot on that one. <laughs> you got to have a big family trucks there, too. <laughs> exactly. You open your doors to your facility here, and we're now building the Mark IV Challenge vehicle. So it's kind of the sister vehicle to the vehicle we drove last year. Are you going to be able to help us? Yeah. It's cool to have something like that being built here at my shop. We have some Factory 5 representatives, some Snap-on Tool representatives, and then you're the wheel man. Have you driven any other vehicles outside of the one last year from Factory 5? No, I haven't. Okay. So I'm excited to see kind of the difference between them. You know, I think something that always feels different, too, is when you take a roof off a car, that adds speed right off the bat. Maybe not to the car, but it feels like I'm going really fast <laughs> when the wind's hitting you in the face and all. That changes the whole feeling of a car. So, you know, obviously it's going to be a little lighter. The center of gravity should be lower without the roof on it. So little things like that will definitely change the handling characteristics of it. I'm going to be riding shotgun with you, so I'm going to be looking like a, <laughs> like, a, like a big animated character riding Like Donkey shotgun. Kong in a go-kart. Exactly, go. <laughs> like, like Bowser is what I always say, or Thwomp. Well, uh, thanks again for having us, man. Thank and you. Uh, yeah, let's have some fun. Let's do it. Tony Zulo. Hi, brother. What's up, buddy? It's been a while. It's been a yes. year. We're in a different backdrop, different setting, not in Massachusetts. We're here in North Carolina. You're here to represent Factory 5. Get your hands dirty, utilizing Snap-on tools. Let's talk about this Factory 5 Challenge car. What are some of the specs, weight, horsepower, what power plant? This one is going to be based off the Coyote. So brand new five liter for a Ford Mustang. Yeah. So, you know, and curb weight in this thing, you know, fully done on the ground, 23 to 2400 pounds. So yeah. it's going to be pretty crazy with something that makes 425 rear wheel. It's got a full cage, full side impact, full roll cage. Um, it's based off all our regular suspension that we usually have. They're just different settings for the suspension for ride heights, but um, this thing's a beast. And you call this a challenge car, why challenge is that? Car. Just because we had a challenge series back in the day where they were all race cars. So we had a fleet of probably 15 to 20 cars on the racetrack racing yeah. around, and that's what they used. Well, it looks sweet right now. It's in its rawest form. We're, of course, going to be utilizing Snap-on tools, some of the basic hand tools, power tools, anything else you kind of think yeah, of. Yeah, I mean, that we're, we're going to go with. through the whole broader you know, spectrum of tools for this. I mean, we need torque wrenches. We need regular pry bars, hammers. I mean, you name it. We got to use everything we got in that big old red box. Got a few uh, snap-on boxes around here, so uh, without further ado, where would we begin on this build? We'll do the front suspension. Okay. So we'll start with that corner and work our way forward, and then we'll work our way back. It's got an independent rear suspension, so it's going to be a little tricky getting those control arms in, yeah. but I think we can handle it. Let's get on with it. All right, brother. All right, we're putting on the two essential panels in the front because before we can actually get our suspension on, these two panels have to go in because it's actually behind the control arm. From cockpit to trunk to firewall, you're looking around 40 panels, probably about 2,000 rivets. All right, Tony, hate to interrupt you here, but we're working on the corner here, and let's talk about the tools. What are you using? I actually show you with a toolbox. I found this long reach ratchet wrench, which has a stepped head, which is actually pretty awesome. I haven't seen one of those. Yeah. So it actually gets me flush in with one of these nuts on the back side. Yeah, so let me, let me tell it's you. It's pretty nice. Yeah, it's nice and flush on one side, and then stepped. So you can get those recessed fasteners. Really cool, and then a ratcheting wrench. Definitely got some good leverage. I think it's huge. Cool. All right, man. Well, I'll let you get back to work. Thanks, bro.
All right, Jim, uh, I see you're doing something here. What exactly are you doing, as well as what tool are you utilizing? I'm putting in the throttle pedal yep. using the long reach ratchet. Yep. Okay. It's kind of deep down in the pedal box, so yeah. that extra reach really allows me to get down in there without having to crawl into the engine bay. Yeah. It goes where other ratchets really can't. Also saw the LED light, and then it heard kind of slow, and then you hit it fast, too. That's right. You know, it's just a little quarter 20 bolts here, so yep. I can get them started with that variable speed, and then Send yeah. them home. And another feature I know is that you can manually loosen the fastener, and as you said, just send it on home and loosen it up or tighten it up. That's right. On the bigger bolts for the pedal box, that's what I was doing. It worked great. Cool. Right on. Well, I'll let you get back to work. Okay. Good deal. Hey, Larry, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, thanks for having us, man. Good to have you here, man. Yeah, and uh, right now, what are you working on? And this sweet new rolling cart is awesome. Yep, this is Snap-on's new rolling mobile cart. It's a great piece of equipment for any build that we do. It's got four casters, yep. so you can position it any way. Plenty of storage. One of the neat things is a speed drawer. It's got all the dividers and you can organize. Saves you a lot of time. Efficiency, organization, I mean, that's, that's just another feature of of the Snap-on roll car and any tool storage exactly. in the Snap-on lineup. Exactly, and it's stable, great drawers, just like all Snap-on's cabinets. Yeah, this is brand new. It's also deeper from what I understand. The power bank got the staggered plugs there as well. A lot of Snap-on's new stuff has USB charging ports, so you can charge that, your telephone. So last but not least, lockable, so your tools Stay your tools. Always lock one. Another neat thing that this has, it's got the expandable slots on the side. We don't have anything here now, but you add on to it yeah. and hang your tools, whatever you need. Fully customizable. It's a nice piece right of equipment. Well, uh, thanks for being part of the team. Thank you for right. having us. I'll Appreciate let you get back to work. It. Thank you, sir. Tony, you guys are moving right along here. I've seen a lot of aluminum. The corners are on. What else have we accomplished so far? We pretty much got this thing at a rolling state. Still in the jack stands. What we're going to do is we're going to put the big old coyote in there now. So once we get that in, we can finish some plumbing. Pretty much move on to the electrical, start doing all the brakes and bleeding all that out. I mean, we actually accomplished quite a bit today, but there's still a lot to do putting that big old monster in. Yeah, this is a big engine. I know we taped up, you know, protecting the chassis. and want to make sure that it doesn't get all scratched up, but this is a massive engine. It is. I mean, for a five liter, I mean, the heads are just gigantic on this thing. So it makes good power. It's got a dry sump on it, so it kind of helps us when we're actually taking on the track. It's a little harder to put on a car that really doesn't have a whole lot of room, but we'll yeah. get it done. All right, and for the car guys out there, what exactly is it? The engine as well as the transmission? This is actually a Coyote, a five liter out of a brand new Mustang with a Tremec TKO 600, which is an aftermarket transmission yep. from Tremec. This, like I said, has a dry sump, but most guys that are building these cars aren't using a dry sump. A regular oil pan will just fit right in. Right on. All right, so let's do it. Let's All drop right, the heart of the beast inside this challenge vehicle. Let's do it. That was a tough Sweet. one. Sweet. That was yeah. a tough one. That is awesome. I mean, take a look at that in there. Tell me how the hell you got it in. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big Honest engine. Honest to God. That is a massive engine. Thanks for watching this episode of Snap On Tools from the Ground Up. Be sure to like, share, and comment below. I want to know which Factory 5 vehicle you'd like to drive.